In May 1897, just over 100 years ago, an Irish fair was held at the Grand Central Palace on Lexington Avenue in New York. The most popular uh, thing on show in, in the Irish fair was a, a huge, gigantic topographical map of Ireland in a long rectangular room surmounted by a huge green shamrock and surrounded by five columned arches. The map was spread across the floor. It was divided into 32 parts, representing the exact contours of the island's 32 counties. But the special attraction of the map was that each of these counties was filled with what they advertised as the veritable Irish soil of the county, duly attested as truly genuine. So the soil for Dublin was brought from Dublin and the soil from Galway was brought from, from Galway. For 10 cents, the visitor to the fair could walk the length and breadth of the island. The nostalgic Irish immigrant could feel underfoot the land itself, could lean down and touch his or her native soil. As the New York Irish World newspaper reported, and I quote, many a pathetic scene is witnessed daily. One day, an 80-year-old woman called Kate Murphy paid her 10 cents, stepped across the coastline, and made for her native county, County Fermanagh. She knelt down and kissed the soil, and then, and I quote again from the newspaper report, crossing herself, proceeded to say her prayers, unmindful of the crowd ar around her. While thus kneeling, a photographer took a flash-like picture of her. The flash was a revelation to the simple-hearted creature who seemed to think it a light from heaven and was awed into reverential silence. When she finally stepped off the Irish soil, she sighed sadly and clung to the fence, still gazing at old Ireland. She kept looking back as she walked away, as if bidding a long farewell." End of quote. This event, when you read it now, has a very strange, haunting quality. For although it happened a century ago, it seems to belong so obviously to the end of the 20th century, not to the end of the 19th, to the era of virtual reality, the real soil duly attested as truly genuine, of nature turned into culture, an exhibit framed, packaged, and sold to paying customers, of intense personal experiences played out in the artificial glow of camera flashes. Even stranger now is the fact that many people in Ireland at the end of the 1990s know exactly how that old woman, Kate Murphy, must have felt. For they too live in a post-industrial world saturated with commercial imagery. Like that old immigrant, they live displaced lives. Yet like her, they retain a reverence for their native soil and are still continually looking backward gazing at old Ireland as they walk away.